When people hear M365 engineer, they typically think that is someone who is working on Word documents or Excel documents or PowerPoints. And if you think this, then you have no clue. But no worries, because in this video, I'll be demystifying the role of an M365 engineer to give you an understanding of what a person in this role does. And by the end of this video, you will understand a lot more about this role, including the key services you will use or implement as an M365 engineer and the key skills required to be working in this role. Now, first let's define what Microsoft 365 is. Microsoft 365 is a cloud-based subscription service that provides access to productivity applications, cloud storage, and security features. Yes, Microsoft 365 is home to many of Microsoft's SaaS tools and applications, like Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Microsoft Teams, and Microsoft Office as a whole. And when I say SaaS, what am I talking about? So SaaS stands for Software as a Service, and it is one of the types of cloud computing services. When we talk about the main cloud computing services, we typically talk about infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. So many of these software as a service applications are accessed and hosted using Microsoft 365. SaaS is simply a model for delivering software to users with the cloud. Now, one thing to note when talking about Microsoft 365 is that Microsoft Azure is well integrated with Microsoft 365, especially when it comes to things like identity management. Entra ID is used to manage identities in Azure, as well as identities in Microsoft 365. And for a cloud engineer working with Microsoft Azure, you're likely to be doing some things with Microsoft 365, and for a Microsoft 365 engineer, you're also likely to be doing some things with the Azure platform. And now that we understand a little bit more about what Microsoft 365 is, we can learn about the things that you'll be working on and understanding as a Microsoft 365 engineer. Now, here are some of the key services you will use and implement in your role. One of them is SharePoint which is a product used to share, manage, and organize content and knowledge, usually internally within a company. Yes, a lot of companies build and manage their internal sites using SharePoint, and they use SharePoint to collaborate within Teams and to share and store company files to make it easier to manage process. Another tool you'll be implementing and managing as an M365 engineer is OneDrive. And OneDrive and SharePoint are also quite similar. OneDrive tends to be used on a more personal level. It's used to manage and store personal files and documents and to ensure that they're backed up. You can access them from anywhere as long as you can log into your account. Other tools are Microsoft Teams, Outlook, Fiverr, and so much more. You may also be involved in using things like Microsoft Defender, Microsoft Intune, and doing lots of multi-factor authentication implementation. But these three tools are a lot more security specific so I'll dive into these three in a later video where I talk more about an M365 security engineer. So I'll let you guys off for now. Now, of course, we're speaking about an engineer role. So this is certainly a technical role. As an engineer, you'll be the one implementing and managing these tools and services. For example, your role may include building the internal SharePoint site for the company and managing the permissions within that SharePoint site. The role may very well involve migrations from other email platforms and migrating them over to use a Outlook. It could involve migrations of documents and files on desktops from being stored locally to being stored on OneDrive. These are just a few examples. There is a large variety of projects that you could be working on in this role. Now we should also mention licensing. Now within Microsoft 365, there are many different licenses that are given to each user within that cloud environment. At enterprise level, you're likely to be using either an E3 license or an E5 license. Now there are many other licenses for maybe smaller companies, but at an enterprise level, these are the two that I personally have worked with quite often in my different cloud and Azure roles and cloud security roles. And these two licenses provide many features, particularly the E5 license. Now here is a list of some of the features that each of these licenses provide. And each of these licenses are assigned per user within the Microsoft 365 environment. So let's say there's a new employee and they want to be using some of the applications and tools that are used by all the other employees and they want to be given access to all of those things. 
the engineer will assign them one of these licenses. Now, as I mentioned before, there are loads of other licenses, so it could vary. Not every user has to have the same license. Some people will need access to less things, some people more. But licensing is something that is pretty important for this role and is pretty important to understand. Now that we understand some of the things an M365 engineer will be doing, we can talk about the skills required to thrive as a Microsoft 365 engineer. Now, the first thing I'll say to this is understanding Microsoft 365 as a whole. As I've mentioned, there are loads of different services, tools, applications within Microsoft 365, and also security features and licenses. So there are loads of different things to understand about this area of the cloud. So simply the knowledge of Microsoft 365 as a whole is super important to thrive in this role. And how do you go about getting that knowledge? There are certification paths which involve the Microsoft 365 tech stack. If you're a complete beginner, the best place to start would probably be the MS-900. I actually have a video on how I passed the MS-900 and I'll leave a link to it. Understanding this is probably the most important skill that is required to work in this role because if you don't understand it, how are you gonna work in it? Now, another skill required is a good knowledge of the Windows operating system. Now, although a lot of the things hosted with Microsoft 365 are software as a service, some knowledge of the hardware is still required. You should know how to navigate on a Windows operating system, whether that is with troubleshooting, whether that is with remote connections, whether that's understanding the security features within the operating system, or just knowing the different versions within Windows operating systems and how they differ from each other, you will need to know about the Windows operating system to thrive in this role. Another thing that you would know that would be really helpful in this role is how to navigate Entra ID. Now, for all those that are a little bit confused, this used to be called Azure AD. Now it is Entra ID. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, identities are very well integrated. We'll need to understand how to navigate Entra ID so that when it comes to identities, you're able to manage them in the best way possible. And following this, another skill that would be really helpful is the skill of scripting. And scripting in this case would come mainly with the knowledge of PowerShell. Now, PowerShell is Microsoft's scripting tool, and it can be used to automate deployments or to set up and configure things. Now, troubleshooting and problem solving. This is a skill that any engineer would need, and it's no different for the Microsoft 365 engineer. You're likely to come across issues or get stuck at different points, or maybe there are users who are having issues with the platform. You need to be able to troubleshoot and problem solve to get these platforms working smoothly again. And the final key skill required is probably the most important. But before I mention that, I will ask that if you're enjoying this video and you found some value, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Now, the final thing is verbal and written communication. Now, you might think that engineers don't require lots of communication and speaking to people, but this is absolutely not the case. As a Microsoft 365 engineer, you might need to speak to clients to gather requirements or to make sure that they understand how to use the systems. You'll need to speak to stakeholders and project managers to ensure that they're following along with the project. You will need to explain technical concepts to non-technical people and you can only do this if you have great verbal communication now with written communication once you're implementing things you also need to be documenting these processes so that if you're no longer working on that project or that tool others can understand exactly what's been done and where everything is so verbal and written communication is important for this role. Now, as we dive deeper into Microsoft 365, there are some specialist areas that you could dive into. And as an engineer in this space, you might dive deeper and go into things like messaging, diving deeper into the use of tools like Purview. Maybe you'll go deeper into the use of Microsoft Exchange, or perhaps even a modern desktop role where you dive into using Intune a lot more. Now, if you're really looking to learn a lot more about these tools and features, as I mentioned earlier, there are loads of Microsoft certifications that cover the Microsoft 365 tech stack. And some of these certifications are at the fundamental level, others associate level, and others 
dive deeper into specialist areas. Now here is a list and a path for some of these certifications in case you're interested in diving deeper and getting certified in these areas. And finally, if this video has given you lots of value and you've learned a lot about this role, then you will also enjoy this video and learn a lot more about this role as well.